Hello and welcome to Score Vision Advantage, a podcast where we share the latest happenings in sports tech and fan engagement. I'm your host, Ashley Peterson, Marketing Director here at Score Vision. In today's episode, we are joined by the founder and CEO at Strive Education, Taylor Siebert. With a passion and commitment for empowering educators and shaping the future generations, Strive Education introduces a hands-on approach for students to learn about digital media and broadcasting. Today, Taylor shares with us the importance of student involvement and developing a reputation around your brand through the game day experience. Whether it's digital media, broadcasting, or an in-venue production, this episode unravels how education is the true foundation for your athletic program and the overall health of your community. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So I know there will be a lot for us to talk about, um, but I feel like we should just go ahead and dive right in. I know you started Strive back in 2012 um, with very much a clear passion for helping empower educators. Uh, What kind of ignited that or started that journey for you? Yeah, I think, great question. I think it stemmed from my educational experience. Um, I got an 18 on my ACT twice. And just school for me was not about test taking. It was about projects and creating things. Me and my buddies, we created videos at, at uh, my friend's basement. And we went around town and shot video and always loved creating content. And so I think when I moved back to Henderson, it was actually in 2011, I thought, what way could I give back to the community uh, with the passions and interests I had in technology and all my experiences prior to leading up to that? And I wanted to get involved with the school. Growing up, I thought I'd be a teacher and a coach, which now I am a coach, and, but went the entrepreneurship route, starting Strive and starting some other companies and wanted to be involved with the school and students just had a, a burning desire to be around students. And now I get to do that and didn't know it would end up like this. And so I just gathered a bunch of technology, uh, went to the school and started streaming events. And um, it's been, it's been an incredible experience. And that first event that we streamed at Heartland, Strive didn't even exist. We were using a Ustream. We were, we were just testing things out and had no idea what I was doing. I didn't go to school for live streaming or production, or I was even broadcasting and announcing games. I just love sports. And what happened was we had all this tech, kind of like what we have set up here, and students just started coming up and saying, what's going on? What is this? What's going on the laptop? What's this huge camera doing here? We had the big shoulder mount camera, and now we have these nice, uh, nice cameras like this. And so I thought, oh, man, this is interesting. I was planning on just doing this by myself, but I started saying to you know a sixth grader, I said, hey, could you run you know, Wirecast, uh, run the software for me to help me produce while I announce? Hey, could you help run the camera? And I saw a spark in these students that I had never seen before. And I thought, these are this is what I would have wanted to do. I was an athlete too, but when I wasn't on the court, I would have been up here on a computer, on a camera, um, announcing games, doing all of these things. And so I knew what we were doing was going to be impactful in schools. And a very transformational, really pivotal conversation with the superintendent at that time, I always give him credit anytime on, on an interview or podcast or story. Dr. Norm Yoder, who lives down the street from me still, told me as I was getting into this endeavor of working with schools, he said, if you want to work with schools, whatever you do, you've got to make it educational. And it was like a light bulb went off for me and saying, okay, yeah, I want to provide the streaming service because there's really not a dedicated service for schools around this, but it's got to be rooted in education. There has to be training involved. And that's what I had done prior as as a bunch of training in a different industry. And so everything kind of aligned and we've just been head down, focused on that since 2011 really and then 2012 is when we officially started strive and it's been an incredible journey and lots of things have changed but yeah. we'll get into that here in a little bit yeah for sure i feel like just in general and i could be wrong but it feels like there's an extra emphasis now in education as like specifically within sports like looking at sports more as a business and looking kind of opening peeking the curtain open a little bit to see behind the scenes and um I don't know. Do you feel like that's changed a lot in the industry? Like, do you feel like people are talking about it a little bit more than they used to? Well, thanks to companies like you guys and us, 
previously, when I would have been in high school, like early 2000s and 90s, the the productions you see now only happened in college or professional. Mm -hmm. It wasn't available at the high school level or even middle school level because of the technology available. Well, now you can run your scoreboard on an iPad. You can run a broadcast from a laptop and do all of these cool things and have a podcast, uh, a roadcaster and do a podcast. So the technology has allowed schools to provide really high quality content if they're willing to put in the work. And sports is the number one way for your school to showcase what's going on from a technology side and sports side. And kids love sports. Not every kid is able to play sports. Mm -hmm. And so to be a part of that in your school and then to say, this is actually a learning experience, an educational, hands-on learning experience, something that maybe I'll do as a career, right? Uh, we have a student who graduated from Kearney High School, Jeff Ekstrom, which is a score vision and strive school, which is amazing. Did play-by-play -play there for many, many years. Did a bunch of play-by-play -play announcing for our, uh, us at State. Went to go work for Rivals. And now he is the communications media relations director for the Omaha Supernovas, which just had their first volleyball game. That is so week. neat. And I have so many questions for you pertaining <laughs> to that, but I'll have to save that probably for another day. Um, but that's really cool. And I do, I do like hearing that these students have a place. Like they're going, it's not just a stop here momentum kind of thing. It's continually evolving. The student has a chance to continue to go into other programs and look at college and say like there are programs for that. There are majors and minors that are in whether it's broadcasting or sports production and we're going to talk about that in a minute because there is a huge wide net for what's possible within this industry. Um, and I know that there's a lot of skills and talents mm -hmm. that also translate into other areas, even if you don't want to stay in sports. But before we hit that, I want to talk about the program itself. So you've broken the program down into two different parts, digital media and broadcasting. I think for a lot of people at their school, it probably feels like those are one and the same, but I know that they are very vastly different. So can you maybe just give a breakdown of what those differences are and how the program is set up? Yeah, great question. So for years, I even have a banner up in my office. We called it new media education. Hmm. And I was very stubborn. I'm a very stubborn person. You can ask my wife that. <laughs> and I think my way is the highway, which is why I'm an entrepreneur and started my own business and didn't want to work for anyone else. Uh, that's a story for a different podcast. But <laughs> I called it new media education and our team was behind it. And they were like, yeah, this is new media. This is not something that we've seen before as far as broadcasting and doing podcasting and doing video production. And so we kind of lumped it all together as new media. And something interesting happened. I started looking at the signatures of the emails of the teachers we were working with. And all of them said digital media teacher. And I went, huh. That's interesting. They're not calling themselves new media teachers. They're calling themselves digital media teachers in the classroom. And then the Strive sponsor or broadcast sponsor. And so we, I kind of went on a journey of discovering how could we tie what's happening in these broadcasts, which typically happen after school, right? It's a classroom basically that's happening in the evening, which is sometimes hard to get students to come to, right? We, we understand that. How can we tie that back to the classroom? And what happened was those classes were called digital media classes. Not a lot of them were called sports broadcasting classes because the act of sports broadcasting is doing the event, doing those tasks. But the digital media side, there's a lot of activities and learning that can happen through creating graphics, just like they are doing for the score vision boards, right? They're creating roster graphics or uh, advertisements that can go on the broadcast in the evening. And those students... At the, you know, when we started, we worked with a lot of small schools. And so the athletes weren't able to partake in the broadcast. And so we said, well, can they create content during class? Mm. So while they're playing the game, the graphic or the video or the audio interview with the coach that they did, can that be played and, and queued up during the sports broadcast? And so that's kind of how we have evolved in thinking about those two things. And now it's even taken a next step as we've created a a product that we sell, which is a curriculum around digital media, which is an introduction to digital media, and then also some Adobe and different software tutorials in that, coaching. Uh, we're launching cohorts with teachers to help them because what has happened is 
a teacher doesn't go to teacher college to learn how to teach digital media. Right. They're a history teacher. We have a science. We've got math. We've got librarians, English. We've got drama teachers. They're coming from all these different areas in the school. And they're going, whether they, they've been chosen by the principal, they say, hey, you know a lot about technology. Do you want to teach our digital media class? Whatever that reason is, or maybe it's the business teacher, which is a growing trend uh, with some of the FBLA things that we're getting involved with, the business teacher is turning into that digital media teacher as well. Interesting. So there's been some a lot of interesting pieces that have been moving around in that digital media space. So we created a curriculum because there is no guide for these teachers. An English teacher is like, where do I start? I don't know anything about Adobe products. Yeah. Um, we've got Canva stuff. We've got all these different things. So we're trying to save them time with giving them. We've got over 150 activities and lessons in design, photography, video production, podcasting, all these different areas. Copyright, which is a big, big deal, Yeah. Um, especially in schools, is making sure we're not stealing graphics and then using them on the Internet. Um, <laughs> I know from experience I've, I've actually gotten fined for that back in the day and creating a blog post. I ripped a photo off. And so teaching students that, the right. how important that is, is really is really key. And so that's what we've lumped into what we call our digital media education program. And then the broadcast education program is the, the, the building of the student broadcasting uh, program for a teacher to have the tools and experience because they don't know how to do that either. What are all the roles? How can we monetize this? Um, what does this look like, the skills that are being learned here? And then we just launched inside of that something really exciting, a production analysis feature. So our team is actually looking at a school's production yeah. and breaking it down for them and giving them uh, feedback. So just like a coach would in sports, we're doing for their broadcast, which we're really excited about and gotten great feedback. And they give us a five minute clip and we'll go, hey, here, you know, based on an area, whether it be announcers or maybe it's their multicam setup, uh, their you know, introduction, their graphics, whatever area they want us to look at, we're breaking that down, providing feedback and helping coach them because a lot of them don't know really how to level up with a broadcast. Right. And so that's it. That's what's in our broadcast education package. And we also have certifications. So we have a sports play-by-play -play certification, a camera operator, and we'll be launching other certifications around what all the roles are in broadcasting. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. So I, ha I actually kind of have a question for you pertaining to that. And I know you and I have talked about this kind of off the podcast and off camera a little bit. But I think one of the number one questions that a lot of educators have when it comes to implementing a program like this is how do we truly evaluate students because of the fact mm -hmm. that some pieces of this can be so subjective? Um, I don't know if you guys have found a way to do that, but it sounds like you're starting to because you're able to provide the feedback. Yeah, I just had a great conversation with a curriculum specialist this week, and I was telling them that, you know, with, with a student broadcast, here's some of the projects that are happening. She goes, yeah, those are tasks. What are the, what are the outcomes and the goals, mm -hmm. you know, from a curriculum perspective? So that's something we are continually working on to help teachers and administrators. How does this attach to standards? Yeah. You know, there's uh, state standards, but there's also what's called ISTE standards, which is a, a large technology organization out there. And so we're really head down trying to work on that. We're not there yet, mm -hmm. but that's constantly what we're trying to meet schools in the middle with because we're coming from the world of broadcasting go, here's what it takes to do a phenomenal high quality broadcast at the high school level. Right. And they have to go, okay, that's awesome, Taylor and team, but how does that, how can I build that into a class or how can we give credit to students because we have all of these standards we have to align to right. in order for us to operate as a school. And so we're trying to meet in the middle with a lot of the different things with the certifications. It's a big, big topic mm -hmm. for not only in schools, but just in general, right? Um, we use HubSpot and I had to get certified in HubSpot in order to <laughs> we use that get too. a discount. And it's a lot, honestly. <laughs> it, is. it is a lot. But incredible. And, and I'm taking that and I'm going, okay, how could we do this for schools? Right. Because this is great learning. It's it's basically indoctrinating me on HubSpot and right. wanting to go sell it to other people yeah. or refer it. How can we do that with schools? And so maybe that's how we end this is how 
we can create score vision and strive education certifications together. Yeah, for sure. Because it's definitely a topic we're having to, um, I am, know you're probably familiar with, and hopefully some of our audience is familiar with score vision Academy, which is our version of education, but it more so focuses on the like in venue production side, as opposed to like the broadcasting. So really looking at like, Overall, how do we create this entire game day experience from creating the content itself to writing the game script, which I'm sure you guys have a little bit of in your program too. Um, but it's definitely, uh, it's expanding. And the more that we talk about it, the more that we're finding that colleges too are also approaching us and having that conversation of, you know, what does this growth look like? How can we have this kind of handoff, you know? And I don't know, do your certifications kind of tie back to any of that as far as like, giving them that leg up once they go to the next level of their education? Yeah, that's the that's the goal with it. Um, I would say right now it is, it is for high school students. It's built for the teacher to create some credibility for the students to have. Um, and early on, and we still get this, is, hey, we're not sure we want students on the, the broadcast. We don't trust them and what they're going to say. Yeah. And so that's really what motivated us for this, the sports play-by-play broadcast is, okay, here is some training and there's some quizzes in between that so that you can, you know, and we give them a PDF certification at the end of it so that they go to the administrator and go, okay, this student went through some proper training. Now it's kind of on them if they say something they shouldn't. Yeah. And, you know, that was an early concern for a lot of schools and we don't hear that anymore Yeah. just because kids have really leveled up and they're taking this so seriously because they are finally understanding that, there's hundreds of people watching right. this and listening to my words. Right. And this could turn into a career. Maybe not. I'm not going to be Kevin Kugler or, you know, be on TV and be an announcer, but I might be the media relations communications director for the Supernovas. Yeah. And I need to start to build my resume publicly to in order and have a great reputation and that that's all part of that. So that certification just provides, you know, so, some checkpoints for the teacher to say hey, we have six students that are able to do this. And then our camera operator one dives into sports specific. So we've gotten a lot of feedback that some of the students that are involved don't know anything about sports. Right. And you guys might have that same experiences. They don't know what a game day looks no. like. Most of them and don't. And they need that structure right. of going, here is the roadmap. They need it laid out. And within that, hopefully they can create and add some different things, but a lot of them, they just need a starting point. Right, it's also just like that general coordination too that I feel like gets missed so much of like overall sports management. Like it's not just that my broadcast starts the minute that I step into the actual venue or even from like when I'm in the cla like classroom, there's a pass off that has to happen from the actual athletic department of, okay, here are the games that are gonna be played and here are the teams that are playing and all of that additional information that then feeds into creating that mm -hmm. whole experience. And when it's done well and it's and the communication is flowing, it's super well-rounded, right? And that's what gravitates the fan to want to have that experience, whether it's through the broadcast or actually in the venue. I feel like we could break this podcast yeah. into two parts because <laughs> yeah, right. I could have a whole conversation with you about that. Because I also want to know, like, as you were talking about just in general, how students are uh, starting to kind of glean off of this and understanding that this is important and it's gonna be on my resume. I also wonder how much social media kind of has to do with that mindset for them, right? Because now there is a public personality mm -hmm. that's available to every single one of us, whether we choose to have it or not. and. So I wonder whether or not, specifically for the high school age, like how much do they recognize that this is important for them? Yeah, and I'll, I'll back up a little bit to piggyback off what we do, what we just talked about and connect it with social media. We have lots of students who are building their kind of profile publicly on, on X or Instagram and sharing, hey, watch the game tonight, I'm gonna be announcing, or they're sharing a graphic of a, of a student like at York who broke the scoring record and he created the graphic and he's sharing it personally to show, hey, look at my talents. I'm amplifying the kid, the student athlete that scored all these points. I'm creating the graphic for him and it creates, <clears throat> it creates a great connection between the school 
and the brand that is happening with school. So what I wanted to talk about a little bit is your fans experience online and in game, especially with sports is just a massive opportunity for the school. Mm -hmm. And if you don't invest in that and you just check the box and go, yeah, they they'll come. Well, that's not enough anymore. Right. People have so many, especially in the Omaha metro area, maybe not in Henderson as much, but still you're, you're displaying a product to the public that they're paying to come watch. They're not obligated to come watch this sports event. Right. You need to give them a reason to come. And if they can't come, they're going to get a great experience online too with the live stream. Right. And those experiences, coinc they're together. Mm -hmm. they, they feel very similar. Obviously, with you guys, you want that in-game experience to be phenomenal and you it drives ticket sales and all of that. And we're trying to reach that audience who physically can't come mm -hmm. or the fan who's you know three hours away that wants to consume that. And the school's reputation is on the line on how that experience is for a very short time. Right. And so if you don't have announcers, you maybe your camera is not very good, your uh, quality isn't isn't high enough. You don't have advertisers to promote your local businesses. All those things fans are now noticing because they're watching sports events all the time and they see these things on ESPN or Fox, CBS, NBC, and they expect those same things at the high school level, which they probably shouldn't. But all those things uh, are being thought from the consumer side. And we think students and schools, athletic directors, teachers, admin should all be on the same page and be promoting your school, right. social media, through the in-venue experience, through the broadcast. All those touch points are huge. Right. And I do think, you know, you mentioned that and then instantly this is kind of a very, I don't want to say it's controversial because that's not really true, but it's a hot topic right now in sports is hey, like we're losing participation of student mm -hmm. athletes because they're going and they're playing for these travel teams. Well, they're playing for these travel teams because they're getting recruited out of those travel teams. But how much would that shift if the experience changed and the community was in general more connected? I'll tell you right now, like my, so my uh, boyfriend, he has a younger sister who plays for Westside High School here in Omaha. She's a stellar basketball player, six foot five mammoth. Um, and she is wow. ruthless. Yeah, she's <laughs> I'll take crazy. Her. <laughs> and she's 16. She's like wild. Um, but she's awesome and she's great to watch. And it was so funny to me. One of the things that she talks about is, well, I like playing at this gymnasium because that gymnasium feels like a college. Mm. Right. And so like for her, that atmosphere is important to the way that she plays. So if that's the case, like why would we not be trying to connect all of these things together to provide that well-rounded experience that we can get that participation? Because we know that participation also improves overall academics for students, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's be honest, students love attention. Yeah. I remember when I was that <laughs> age, I love attention. And so when you see yourself up on the score vision board uh, with a hype video, which we have that's built into our digital media curriculum is, you know, how do we create a hype video? Yeah. Well, it starts with story, vision, and make it something unique. Kids love that stuff. Mm -hmm. We do all the hype videos or did, and now our former creative director does all the hype videos for state championship events. Right. And we get so many cool things. And so that's something a school can do over a travel team. They they don't have score vision boards, you know, at a at a gym that has seven, you know, gyms and be able to do hype videos for each of those games. Mm -hmm. But they do at your specific school. And if it's student driven, then it's a home run and kids love it. That video goes out on social, the graphic after the game with the winning score, your pictures on there. You took that picture in the digital media class. It was created by a student. Like all this stuff connects and the school has to think about themselves as a brand. Mm. You, Public, private, independent, doesn't matter. You've got to think about your school as a brand. And we believe the digital media experience and broadcasting experience for your school needs to level up in order to elevate your brand. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, to kind of like segue off of that, we've talked a lot about the importance of having a brand and having all of these things and in, in integrating this into your school. But what are the actual steps that a school could start with in order to get this off the ground and up and running? Yep, so the first thing we love to do is a tech review. So a lot of schools have technology and that's sometimes, and I, I push back with schools a lot 
the last couple of years is, hey, don't get hung up by the technology. And I finally, after several conversations with schools, I realized, well, that is a hurdle, is, well, what kind of equipment do we need? And that prevented a lot of schools from even starting. So the feedback we've gotten over the last several years is to start small. So look at what you have. So we do a free tech review. Hey, do you have a camera? Hey, do you have a soundboard? Do you have a laptop that is able to edit videos or stream your events online? Let's look at what you have and start there. The other key piece in that tech review is where, what are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals at your school? Is it to provide the best online experience for fans? And um, is that video? Is that we want to be the best in graphics? Do we want to do a lot of writing content? Do we want to do a podcast? Don't try to do all those things at once. Mm -hmm. Find some students because what we found is some students will say, hey, we really want to start a podcast. We'll do that because you have some students who really want to do that. Don't make them create a bunch of graphics if they just want to talk. Now, I push back because I had students several years ago come into our office as a career pathway program say, we want to start a podcast. I go, okay, great. What do you want to talk about? And they said, we want to talk about the NFL. I go, <laughs> well, first of all, no one's going to listen to high school students talk about the NFL. <laughs> so it was a great learning experience right. to go, let's, let's niche down and figure out what, what's the story we're trying to tell? Who this are we going to talk to? strategy. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> There's a lot. Marketing is built in, like, think about your audience. What problem are we trying to solve with this podcast? So lots of different things. Um, to go back to that, technology is a big piece of that. We want to help you with that and evaluating that and then starting small, starting one area. And that sometimes attracts other students that say, hey, you're doing a podcast. Could I create the graphics right. for you to promote the podcast? Hey, could we add video to the podcast? And so we've now been working with schools like Kearney and Johnson Brock for almost 10 years. And a lot of schools get intimidated by that because they have four cameras or now Carney ha couldn't have up to eight. Wow. And they're the first school we're working with now that has a TriCaster system that did instant replay on ScoreVision. Yeah. So I've got to give them a, a shout out. Um, it worked really well once it was turned on. Uh, so we did an event earlier this month and it wasn't working and they called you guys, they called us and everyone's like, what's going on? Well, the power switch wasn't on on the piece that was connecting to the score vision board. It's the funny things, and like that's that. why, yeah, we're here to to help with that. But it was a it was a funny story, and Rob Goff does an incredible program. But yeah, a lot does. of schools get intimidated by seeing that and go, "Man, we can't do that." Mm -hmm. Well, Rob didn't start there. Yeah, he started with a little handy cam mm -hmm. and a couple students. You build to there, and we we are the guide to help you with that, and partners like you guys as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so that brings me to another question that I do have is overall, like, if I'm purchasing this equipment, we talk about this a lot just here at Score Vision because obviously it's a little bit different. You're purchasing a massive LED scoreboard, most yeah. <laughs> likely from us, or you're purchasing the software from us and the LED from a partner, however it works. But um, that's a big feat, right? And so through ScoreVision, we have our advertising features, and that helps them to gain sponsors. Hmm. So that way they can help cover a lot of the cost, if not all of the cost, and actually end up generating revenue. Is that something that they can do through broadcasting today or something that you're looking at in the future? Absolutely. I just interviewed, and this will get released here in a couple of weeks, um, a teacher down in Johnson Brock that has been doing broadcast, I mentioned her just a bit ago, and she was avoiding the advertising piece, she said, for about three years because she's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. And we have resources, like, but she just didn't want to take on that burden of handling the money and how do I do these ads. It took a business basically throwing money at her and saying, you guys do such a phenomenal job. We want to give you $500, $1,000. And so she got into it. And now she's like, gosh, I wish I would have done this three or four years ago. Yeah. Because they have $5,000 sitting in their bank account that's theirs to spend on some upgrades or some resources that they need, whether it's from us or whoever. And so we actually, from day one, I hired my first employee, started a, did an advertising program, and it was to tie the broadcast advertising with the yearbook advertising. There were no video boards at that time in 2011, 2012. 
And so now with schools doing the video board advertising, we think the broadcasting side is a great add-on, right? Hey, you're going to get this advertising, this banner graphic here. Do you want to add to and put your commercial on the broadcast for X amount? And so we have some guidelines. We actually built a dashboard. It's part of our broadcast broadcast education program toolbox. Uh, we have a broadcast advertising dashboard, and you can track all of your ads. Um, we use it for events to, to see, okay, what are all the assets? Who, who's advertising on this event? How many times does their ad run? What are the analytics for that? Mm -hmm. You have to manually put out that, all that in, but it's a spreadsheet that we built to help schools kind of manage all of that. And so we feel like those go hand in hand is if you're talking to them about the video board ad, you might as well at least say, hey, you have a broadcast right. or vice versa, which, whichever way the conversation goes. So Yeah. Okay. Well, I love that so much because we're obviously, like I said, huge proponents of that. And the minute you start being able to add on all these additional opportunities for businesses, it becomes one of the most valuable tools. And we've seen that through the scoreboard and through our fan app, obviously, too. There's ads running in that. And once you put your broadcast in there, then you get even more advertising. And um, we have a tool, too, that reports just for the scoreboards. Mm. But we also have partnered with a media rep that's called Scoreboard Media, to putting a little plug out there for Charlie because I love Charlie. <laughs> um, but it's really neat because it actually helps the school. They run a lot of those contracts for them. So I know there's a lot of resources out there for that. Um, but it's definitely something that I think schools need to consider as they start kind of looking at the option to be able to really raise money for their programs so that they can do things like what we are talking about today. Um, okay, my very last question, because we're going to run out of time, is overall, how do you foresee this program expanding to really meet the needs of this continually evolving education system? And more importantly, what do you think could happen if companies like ours, obviously we already work together, but if other companies like ours work together to create this, this program for these students to be able to be successful. Yeah, it's a home run. And I, I go back to several years ago um, when you guys started, I think UTAN was one of the first schools yeah. that put in a score vision board and they were one of a, a great school of ours and still are. And they, they layered in the score vision uh, content that was needing to be created inside their digital media broadcasting class. So I knew right away, I was like, oh yeah, this makes sense because you're creating a lot of some of the same content. It may be different sizes, it's different application, but it was being rolled into that. And so I think for us, it's a it's a natural fit um, on the educational side, but it's just a home run. We're all trying to provide experiences for students to help better prepare them for the workforce when they get into jobs like what we're doing. Or what we found is we are hiring those kids, uh, those students we, that, yeah. that interned for us are now our customer service and our production manager, or they are support team in the evening when they're in college, great money. And so I love that. I'm sure you guys are gonna see that same experience yeah. um, with the students who really grab a hold of what you do and then mm -hmm. you go, wow, you're really good at this, we'd love to hire you. And those students really stand out. And so I think if you have that perspective as a company to go, Hey, this is a great recruiting tool for us too, and we're providing great opportunities for students. It's a home run, but the education space has changed quite a bit, and the attention, everyone's trying to get educators' attention. And so if we can come at it from a transparent way and go, we're trying to help you, yes, obviously there's a cost to our services so that we can have a business, but we're trying to help you and help, most importantly, help students gain these experiences then it's a no-brainer for the educator to go, yeah, let's let's work together. And then, hey, could you work with this partner as well? Because they're right. kind of doing the same thing. How can we collaborate together? It's one of our core values is to collaborate. So yeah. love that. Collaboration over competition. I We say that a lot here for sure. And it would be so interesting to see, and this is like a pipe dream for me, right? Because I love talking about this stuff, mostly because if something like this would have been available to me as a student, it probably would have changed my trajectory quite a bit. But like the overall idea of companies like ours creating some type of co-op that allows for us to basically have like a panel where we all sit down and we talk about how do these education programs all link together so that we can really just provide this 
and meet the mission of what's happening with our students and like putting that before everything else. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get there, but we will. I hope, I we hope will. Someday. We, we already host several educational events. No and kidding. Yeah, we, we do a fall conference. We have a partnership with Midland University. And so oh, cool. we host that there. And then we do a summer workshop. So when the first year we started in 2012, 13, we did a, a workshop and got teachers and students together to create content. So uh, the in-person experience. Now, how to scale that across the country uh, costs some money, but I think right. virtually right now we're able to do a lot of these things online. Mm -hmm. I think there's some great opportunities to really highlight the teachers. I know you've had, um, I believe, Glenwood on, which we've worked with yeah, them Jack on. Person. Yeah, those guys. Highlight those teachers and share because teachers love learning from other teachers. Mm -hmm. No offense to what we do and us, like they <laughs> love learning from us too. But when it comes from a teacher and they see how a teacher's actually doing it and executing it and doing it well, they want to talk to that teacher and right. find out, okay, how are you doing this? How are you incentivizing students to come to your events? How are you generating more revenue for your program to buy all this equipment? Like they want to know how they did it because every school is kind of doing it differently. If we can bring all of them to the table and highlight that and then highlight the students work, the, the hype videos they're creating, the graphics they're creating and create this high school kind of awards thing yeah. and make it educational and they can all learn from it. I think Omaha is queued up to be the place to do that. So I let's know. make it happen. I don't know if this room's big enough. But. Yeah, uh huh. Maybe <laughs> not in this little conference room, but somewhere else. Yeah, no, I think that'd be so cool. It'd basically be like a national conference, but for educators who are specifically in digital media. And I think that would be uh, phenomenal and would definitely be very supportive of helping our teachers and our staff. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Um, it was lovely getting to hear all the different things that are happening over at Strive. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Score Vision team. Uh, glad to be on.